So Billboard teamed up with Vibe Magazine to go ahead and try to release the top 50 greatest rappers of all time. Over the last week or so, they've been rolling out all these different artists and explaining to us why they believe that these rappers should be in the position that they're in. As they've been rolling out these artists, honestly, I have not been mad at this list at all whatsoever. I actually think it's very respectable and very well put together list. I'm not going to go through the whole list. What I will do is bring up the list for you guys real quick, and I'm going to scroll through to the, the stuff that I really want to talk about here. But as you see, it's a pretty respectable list. They, they managed to get some legends in there. You know, Ice-T, Queen Latifah. I think Bun B at 43 is a very respectable position. I think Redman should be a little bit higher on the list, but that's a different discussion. Dr. Dre, I think, should also be higher on that list. They got Ludacris on there. Gucci Mane, I think, is a good selection. 37 for Common. Most Def. This was a controversial one with Future. You know, honestly, like, I think Busta Rhymes is actually one of the few artists on here who I believe should be much, much higher. I believe that Busta Rhymes is a top 20 rapper. Um, especially after his latest release, uh, he's he's proved the longevity aspect of things. And I think it's, it is what it is, but I think he definitely deserved to be a little bit higher than the list. Um, then we got T.I., a uh, little Kim, Lauren Hill, Pusha T, who I believe should, might be a little bit lower on the list, honestly. I think Black Thought should be a lot higher on the list. He's top 20 to me, in my mind. Q-Tip, big pun. Method Man at 25, that's a very respectable spot for Method Man. I think it's like the, the perfect spot for Method Man is about 25. KRS-1, Curtis Blow at 23, which you know, he's a legend, pioneer. Ghostface Killer. And I think this is where... I start to get kind of kind of fussy, I guess, about this list because, and, and, and honestly, this whole thing's subjective. And I know that they had like a roundtable discussion around all this, and they like you know put in their thoughts and base it off of numbers and accolades and all this stuff. Um, but I mean, I think this is the beauty of hip hop, right? Is the idea that I think everybody has their own personal goats established for personal reasons. And then there's like undisputed goats, right? But everybody has a reason to argue their own personal goats. So going back to this list, you know, DMX, right, at number 21. I believe that DMX, especially after his death, is a top 20 rapper in the sense that, you know, this guy went on one of the best three album runs in hip hop history. And, you know, he's iconic. He's a movie actor, et cetera, so forth. His story is a little sad in the sense that he's not, I mean, he ended up dying of, I think, a drug overdose, I think is what it ended up being. And then the idea that, you know, he, he's a troubled soul. DMX has been through some things. And so he doesn't rank high in the flourish department, you know, like the ability to be like, oh, I'm a billionaire on a yacht with a wife. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do all that. You know what I'm saying? And so I guess that's the reason why he's just slightly misses the top 20. But when we look at the rest of the list, this is where it gets kind of wild, right? So 20 is Big Daddy Kane. Honestly, I'm not even mad at that. Um, that's a respectable spot for Big Daddy Kane. Dude's a legend. Missy Elliott, absolutely. However, I do think that she should be a little bit higher because in my opinion, I think Missy Elliott is the most important female rapper of all time. A lot of you will argue with that. I'm sure you guys love to argue with me, but I think Missy Elliott should be higher. Uh, they got Ice Cube at number 18, which is super respectable. Honestly, I think Ice Cube is like their original rapper turned actor, pioneer, uh, multimillionaire, OG. I'm saying he's like the boss at that, right? 50 Cent at 17 is respectable, but I do think what they, what they're trying to base this off of accolades. I would say the back half of 50 Cent's career is not as accoladable, I guess. So it's interesting that he was on this list at number 17 because I feel like, yes, Get, Get Rich or Die Trying is easily one of the best albums of all time and one of the best debut albums of all time for a hip-hop artist. But with that said, I don't think that's enough for me to be like, oh, you know, he deserves to be a top 20 rapper of all time in the history of rap. Um, especially, like I said, after he left Interscope, you know, he hasn't dropped anything incredibly iconic since then, right? So that, that, that's a that's a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? We'll talk about it. But 
50 Cent number 17 is like, hmm. Scarface and number 16. Now, this is actually surprising. Because I think a lot of people do not give Scarface enough flowers. I think Scarface is one of those root-based rappers where all of your legends are connected to Scarface in some kind of way, shape, or form. Plus, he pioneered the entire Houston, uh, I guess, I don't even know what you call that region, Texas movement. Um, dude is an absolute legend. And I, I don't think a lot of people have Scarface on their list. So, you know, it's respectable enough that he got added there because I think that that's, that's actually really, really dope. Like I said, it, it seems like this roundtable discuss, discussion had a lot of thought put into it, which is very, very respectable. I, I give props to people for thinking about this really deeply. You know what I'm saying? Scarface number 16 is, is brilliant. I love that. J. Cole number 15. Now, obviously, this is where things get kind of wild because now we're, we're dipping into these new school rappers. Like I guess the new school generation. And J. Cole being this high is a little triggering for me in the sense that I, to me personally, and this is my personal opinion, J. Cole does not have a classic album. All of his albums are very, very, very good, but they don't have incredibly high replay value with a classic vibe to it. Like if you put on uh, Snoop Dogg's and Dr. Dre's Let Me Ride or a numerous of the songs that they did during that era. These are classic era-defining songs. And I don't think that J. Cole, at least ever since he went major, has songs that ha operate at that level. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have hit singles. It doesn't mean that he hasn't done numbers. It doesn't mean that he hasn't proven himself. I'm talking solely on the, on the bodies of work that he puts out. Every album that he puts out is like really, really good. It's like, oh, it's a good album, but I never like revisit it. And if I do, it's like on chance because it came out on came up on stream or something like that, right? So J. Cole at number 15 is a little, little high for me. But I also know that they base this off of accolades. And J. Cole has done numbers. I'm saying J. Cole has sold plenty of records, more than most of the rappers listed on here. So it's a justifiable position if you're basing it off of all these factors that are coming into play. So I guess I guess it is what it is. LL Cool J, you know, he's the original. He's the OG man. This is like the first real mainstream rapper, right? He, I mean, I feel like if you didn't put LL Cool J in the top twenty, you would be pissing off like a lot of people, right? Because like I said, this guy's like the first. Like he's like the 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 one, right? He 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 pulled up and was like, "Yo, I'm gonna change rap forever," and et cetera. So for rumor has it, he's actually working on a brand new album. So that's that's cool. I'm saying excited to hear some new LL Cool J. It'll be interesting to see what he does. I think uh, they announced that they announced something. There's a producer on that album that he's working with. I have to go look it up. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. Uh, but continuing on, I'm like I said, I'm really glad that this list is respecting the legends and putting them in their proper position. Like I don't think LL Cool J is is a top ten rapper. And honestly, like in terms of like preference personal preference i wouldn't put him in top 20 either but i also respect the history i know the legacy i know what this guy's done for hip-hop and you know he hey I, he, he's that dude he's ladies love cool james make it happen um going back to this list you have rock Kim at number 13 i believe which you know he is like the pioneer of the complicated rhyme scheme i i, I believe that my nephew is named after Rock Him. I'm saying like he has touched like a whole generation of hip hop because of his insightful lyrics, his his militant stance, his, his, the production that he brought with Eric B. Like this dude is clearly a legend. And if you're if you were watching this video and under the age of thirty, go check out Rock Him because you might not be familiar with him. If if you are, it's probably because your parents exposed you to him. Um, but you know, dude is a, is literally like one of the greatest rappers of all time. Um, period. There's no, there's not really a lot of debate to that. Andre 3000. So this is another one that has me like, hmm, I can understand why they would say that, but it's also super debatable, like super debatable. Cause in the sense that in terms of bodies of work, most of the work that Andre 3000 has put out has been with outcasts, right? And solo material, he only has the love below, which is not a rap album. Since the Love Below, I think they did the Idlewild soundtrack, but he has not put out any uh, more music. 
with that said, Andre 3000 is probably like the most sought after guest appearance that you can ever have in hip hop history. Like if you get Andre 3000 on your track, people will flip the fuck out over it. It's crazy. Like and that's because this dude is an amazing rapper. Like his technical ability, his storytelling ability is top notch. And honestly, like when he does come out and he does pop out with a verse, it's so high quality that it's like, damn. Matter of fact, perfect example is when he popped out with Kanye West on uh, that Donda song that was like a dedication to their mother. His verse damn near made me cry. That's how powerful this dude is, like, lyrically. Um, so I understand, like, why Andre 3000 would be considered to be, like, this high on the list. But once again, they're, they're basing this, at least off their own their own merits, off of uh, accolades, uh, record sales, cultural impacts, and there's a couple of other things. But it's the, it's the record sales and the accolades that got me. Yes, they did win the Grammy for Best Hip Hop Album. Maybe it was Album of the Year for Love Below Speaker Box, which is a pretty big deal. And he got Hey Ya, which was a massive crossover single. But like I said, in terms of longevity, which is one of the other factors on there, longevity, Andre 3000 is like a hermit. Pops up when he wants to and pops out. And so it's kind of hard to be like, oh, you know, this is a guy who uh, is uh, pushing the culture to this day, right? Because he's out here acting and playing flute in airports and just doing all kinds of wild stuff. He's not rapping. He's not putting out new albums. Like if Andre, but the thing is, like if Andre 3000 dropped the album right now, it would go crazy. It would probably end up being an incredible album that would probably win a bunch of Grammys and make him famous and all this stuff. Like, it's, he definitely has that deep of an impact on the game to where he, his cultural impact runs deep. But to put him this high on the list is solely off of the impact of his lyrical abilities and not necessarily off of his accolades or his record sales. So that's interesting that they got him here. They got my man Kanye West here, man. And I, <laughs> what's interesting about Kanye West at number 11 is when you read this paragraph about him, they talk about all these amazing acc accolades. But even right here in the big old blue letters, they talk about the anti-Semitic tropes and how Ye's fall from grace amid ongoing reported mental health issues has sadly been as monumental as his artistic output. And that's actually a really interesting way of saying that Yo, Kanye West fell off, at least in the eyes of the media, right? We all know why. Like, we're not going to get into it. We're not. That's not what this video is about. But I definitely feel like if Kanye didn't go on these mental tirades and do all the stuff that he was doing, he'd probably be a lot higher on this list. Probably top 10. I almost feel like it's like a slight to Kanye to not put him in the top 10. Especially when you look at the next person on here, who I believe is the most egregious person on this entire list, Nicki Minaj. So they have Nicki Minaj here at number 10, right? And honestly, like, I'm not even trying to make this like an anti Nicki Minaj video or anything like that. What I'm looking at are the, the facts presented in front of us. Now, record sales, granted, Nicki Minaj is actually one of the highest selling uh, hip hop artists of all time. So we'll give her that. Cultural impact, sure, she has written the blueprint for the sexy female Barbie rapper MC, et cetera, so forth. Accolades, I don't think she's won a Grammy. I might be wrong about that, but I don't think she's won any awards in, the, in that sense. So it's interesting that she is so high, right? And they especially they have little Kim on here. I didn't see Cardi B on here, but the fact that they have Nicki Minaj in the top 10 of the greatest rappers of all time is pretty crazy. It almost feels like they needed to fill the slot with a female artist. Like I said, I'm not trying to knock Nicki Minaj's, Nicki Minaj's talent set, her ability to rap, or her accolades or her efforts. But what I am trying to say is that I definitely feel like she should be a little bit lower on this list. Just simply based off the fact that we're talking about the entirety of hip hop, right? If we're looking at it that way, I would put Nicki Minaj behind Lil' Kim and Lauren Hill and a couple other rappers in terms of female MCs who have paved the way. Now, in terms of everything else, which is I think is the most important accolade in all this, record sales, Nicki Minaj by far outsells all female rappers in the history of, of, of hip hop possibly combined, and then some. So that alone, you know, puts her in a stratosphere that's different from the others. But I, I was talking about this on our Quasar Cult podcast. Make sure you go check out Quasar Cult, by the way. That's our new blog. Um, Nicki Minaj 
actually made a pretty good impact on the track Monster with Kanye West, Jay-Z, and Rick Ross in the sense that that was like kind of like her big like showing out moment, right? And that was like early on in her career. The album hadn't even come out yet. And this came, this chick came on and just basically annihilated the track and dropped one of the craziest verses of that generation. And so I think about that from that perspective. And it's like, I, I, I can kind of see Nicki Minaj being in the top 10. It's justifiable, but it's a hard sell. I think that you really have to like really dig deep into this chick's catalog, see how far she's come, et cetera, so forth. But me personally... I mean, I would be better if she was, like, knocked down to somewhere in the lower half of the top 20. Um, I know the barbs are going to come out and be like, what the fuck? But I'm just telling them how I feel. I, I, I like Nicki Minaj. I have nothing against her. I'm just reading it how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, moving on. We have Snoop Dogg at number nine, which I think is super interesting because, once again, going back to the 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 accolade aspect of things like talking about the fact that oh you know um accolades and record sales snoop dogg has not sold a lot of records in the last 10 damn near decade over a decade right he has never won a grammy and he hasn't really had that much cultural impact on hip-hop in the last 10 years or so Maybe more than that. I would even say the last 15 years or so, Snoop Dogg has not had that much cultural impact on the culture of hip-hop. Now, outside of hip-hop, especially when it comes to weed culture and just basically black culture, Snoop Dogg's a fucking icon, right? Like, this dude has taken it as far as you can possibly go as a, a dude from the hood in the streets of Compton all the way up to cooking with Martha Stewart and making commercials and, do, and doing all kinds of wild stuff, right? So it kind of depends on how you define cultural in, impact. For me, I think Snoop, Snoop Dogg is like a black icon, more bigger than hip-hop in a sense that, like, 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 like I just said, he inspires me to be like, oh, shit, this dude literally like, basically came from nothing and is one of the biggest stars in hip-hop history, right? Despite the music, like the music's actually secondary. I can't even remember the last time I listened to a Snoop Dogg album, right? Now, I know he put out a song, a whole album. He just bought Death Row and he did a song with Eminem that's pretty lit. But I don't sit down and listen to Snoop Dogg's music. If, if Snoop Dogg were to drop an album right now, I'm, I'm not going to check it. You know what I'm saying? It's just gonna, I'm probably going to be like, okay, cool. He dropped. He's still around. But I'm not going to go check for it because he just hasn't been relevant to me on that level to where I'm like, oh, shit. Do Snoop Dogg, you know what I'm saying? And that, that's why it's kind of like, when, when I think about the top 10 greatest rappers of all time, these would be rappers that would basically, like if they dropped right now, I'm, I'm dropping everything and checking out what they do. I can't say that about Nicki Minaj and I can't say that about Snoop Dogg. So that, that that's just my vibe. Y'all can argue with me in the comments if you want to. I know you guys like to argue, but that's just my vibe. I'm saying, moving on, moving on. Drake, we got big old Drake. Good old Drake. The most, I think he's the top selling hip hop rapper of all time at this point, meaning he's sold the most records. So that's a given. You know what I'm saying, culturally speaking, this dude has shifted the culture in ways that honestly we didn't see, right? He has an entire city on his back. Like Toronto's GDP is like 9% Drake or something like that. Like 9% of the tourism and money that makes, that that city makes is Drake. I can't think of any other rapper in the history of hip hop that has that kind of impact on a city period. So that part also, you know, he's iconic, man. This dude got mad hits. And honestly, like it's kind of hard to like, like, I feel like almost everybody out there, if you're a fan of hip hop, you probably have at least one Drake thing that you like. It might not even be a whole song. It might be a verse. It might be something that he did in a video, but like, this dude has been around just so long, and he's been such a big staple in the last like decade and a half of hip hop that it's like he's infiltrated all these different cultures and all these different sounds and scenes. There's so many different versions of Drake. Like it's crazy. He's like a chameleon almost in the sense that like he honestly doesn't really have his own style. That's like oh that's Drake at this point because his next album might be a whole dancehall album or he might drop. 
uh, a salsa album. I don't know. Drake's crazy. He'd be wild out. So that makes sense to me. Um, I think that's solid. I think that's a fair place to put Drake without pissing a bunch of people off. Because if you put Drake in top five, people are going to snap. People but like, no way, Drake. He doesn't even write his own verses, blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, like, there's no way that you could put Drake in top five without people flipping out. Matter of fact, there's probably a bunch of people flipping out right now, writing whole ass think pieces that are mad that Drake is uh, in the top ten. But honestly, you can't you can't refute that, bro. Like, Drake is, Drake is that dude. He's crushing it, crushing it. Anyways, moving on, we got Lil Wayne. See, that makes sense. So, like, you can't. You can't put Drake and Nicki Minaj on the top 10 without Lil Wayne being above them. Um, to me, th this is a, a perfect slot for Lil Wayne, number seven. I think Lil Wayne is definitely the number seven best rapper of all time. That's a very fair position. I feel like I, I could say that in confidence. Lil Wayne is the number seven best rapper of all time, period. And the, the reason why, especially when they look at like the parameters that they're using for these rappers, is longevity. This dude's been around since he was like 14 years old, 12 years old, rapping his entire career since he was 14 years old. I think me and this dude are like two years apart at this point, right? Yeah, I think he's 36, something like that. Like, how old is Lil Wayne? Let me check real quick. How old is Lil Wayne? He is, oh, he's 40 years old, so he's two years older than me. This dude literally has been rapping since he was 14 years old. And I'll even be dead ass honest, when Lil Wayne first came out, I hated him. I thought he was terrible. I thought he was like basically how like a lot of old heads feel about like trap rappers is like the same way I felt about Lil Wayne when he first came out. I was like, oh, he's ruining the culture, blah 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 blah. But the thing about him is that as he kept going, he kept getting better and better and better. And I think it was around Carter Three when I was like, oh man, this guy's actually like really really dope. And then ever since then, I've been a massive Lil Wayne fan. And his last two albums, snapping. The funeral, snapping. Carter uh, 5, snapping. Dude just announced another album, Carter 6. This is a situation, like I was just saying before, where I will stop everything I'm doing. I'll listen to Carter 6 because it's going to be snapping. And he's a very, very good rapper. Like the way he puts together his bars, he's he's one of the best to do it. And you guys can argue with me if you want. Lil Wayne, number 7, that rapper, that that's that's solid, bro. I like that. That's a good position. Um, yeah, we'll keep it moving. I don't think I need to say any more than that. Number six on this list is going to be the Tories B.I.G. So this is such a weird one to me. Um, and I know I'm going to probably catch mad hate for what I'm about to say. Because honestly, like, I'm actually a really big Notorious B.I.G. fan. Like, I rock with the Notorious B.I.G. heavy. If you guys know me very well, you know that I was team bad boy in the East versus West thing. Like, I, was, I wanted to rock the shiny suits. I copped all the bad boy albums. Biggie was the man, right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Biggie did not have that didn't have that much material. Meaning that at the most this dude dropped maybe three albums worth of material. Right? We got a double disc and we got ready to die. Everything else that has come out since then has been a rehash, a rework, or a remix, or they put freaking twist on a song or whatever, and we've he, you're, we're basically putting him in this position based off of two albums, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Ready to Die and Laugh, Life After Death are two incredible albums, two of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. Life After Death is a staple in my life. It was like when I bought that album, it was it was life-changing. But if we're basing this off of the parameters that this list has set, his culture impact has not stretched past the mid-2000s. And what I'm, what I'm saying by that is that, like, we're not seeing rappers emulate or try to imitate imitate it towards B.I.G. Uh, he's not carving new lanes. We're still seeing people try to be like Pac all the time. Like Tupac Shakur is like basically like an icon to this day. I'm not saying that Notorious B.I.G. is not an icon. But if I go look at their Spotify numbers right now, I almost guarantee that Notorious B.I.G.s are nowhere near Tupac right now. And we're actually going to look at this right now because... That's what we're going to do. The Tourist B.I.G. is currently sitting at 18 million listeners. And watch my watch me get sunned right now by my own experiment here. Tupac Shakur is sitting at 20 million. So there's not that much difference, but no more people listen to Pac than uh, the Tourist B.I.G. And Tupac is just a little bit more iconic. Now, once again, with that said, 
just to like refute my own argument here, I think that it's fair to say that with those two albums that Notorious B.I.G. dropped, he left such a lasting impact that he's even considered to even be in the conversation. A lot of rappers have died since Notorious B.I.G. has died in similar ways, right? Like Nipsey Hussle just died a couple years ago. We're not putting Victory Lap on here, right? We're not putting Nipsey Hussle on here, right? So that's why I think about where it's like, damn, you know, the, the, the phenomenon that happened behind, behind Notorious B.I.G., like when he dropped all the way up to his death, is one of the craziest stories in hip-hop history, one of the biggest moments in hip-hop history, and one of the most cultural, impactful moments in hip-hop history. As far as record sales, I don't think he's even in the conversation at all. But, hey, I wasn't the one who wrote this list. I would put Biggie a little bit lower on the list. I still think that he's a top 10 rapper, maybe even somewhere in the top 20. But number six is a little high little bit high just a little bit and maybe i'm wrong like i said tell me in the comments tell me in the comments anyways number five is eminem honestly i'm not even gonna say much about this i think this is pretty straightforward here i think this is a fair place to put eminem you can't put eminem at number one because then you're gonna have the lynch mob after you that's not gonna happen but eminem is one of the most important artists not only in hip-hop history but in music history period do i really need to talk about eminem like this is it's fucking eminem I mean, if you look at his career, all the albums he's done, the record sales, I, I think I, I I may have to correct myself because I said that Drake is the highest selling rapper of all time. It is not. It is Eminem by far, by far, by far, by far. Like, I think Eminem has sold something like 150 million records. So, you know, he definitely hits that accolade. In terms of cultural impact, that's a given. You know what I'm saying? In terms of uh, uh, lyrical ability, that's a given. Like, you can honestly argue for Eminem to be in the top, like, the number one rapper of all time. You could do that. But, and this might sound racist, Eminem is not black. And if Eminem was black, he'd probably be number one. And if they were to give Eminem number one on this list, they, like I said, it'd be crazy. It'd be crazy. It'd be nuts. There's no way that you're going to have a roundtable discussion and talk about the history of hip-hop and then put Eminem at number one. And like I said, it's not even a slight of Eminem. That's just fact. I think Eminem knows that too. So, whatever. Anyways, uh, number four is Tupac Shakur. And I already kind of said my little thing on Tupac over here. Um, basically saying that, you know, this is probably the most iconic rapper of all time. And when I say iconic, I mean that to this day, people are still playing Tupac music like that dude's still alive. And people are still hoping that he comes back. And, you know, the seven-day uh, Killuminati theory was nuts, right? And people thought that he was still alive. And the movies about him, you know, the the, 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 the thing about it, too, going back to Notorious B.I.G. argument, and maybe this even justifies Notorious B.I.G. a little bit, Tupac's career was only six years. I think maybe seven years. So that means that over seven years, this dude created one of the biggest waves and one of the biggest movements and one of the biggest sensations in hip-hop history. So it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, that's about right. I mean, many many people will say that Tupac should be number one. I, I can understand why people will say that. But for me personally, I don't think Tupac's that great of a rapper. Like, I'm not saying that he's bad at rapping. What I'm saying is that when it comes to his lyrical ability, he's not going to come over here and lyrical miracle you or hit you with triple entendres or hit you with crazy metaphors that you think about like three days later. Like, oh, shit, that's what he meant. Tupac doesn't do all that. What he will do is he will rap Hennessy and enemies and then say some political shit and say some facts and say some stuff about some some shit in the streets. And it hits like because he has the emotional impact behind his delivery. And he's actually was probably one of the best at that, if not the best rapper when it came to feeling his music. I think the only one that comes close to him is maybe uh, DMX in terms of that. But uh, let's see. We also have over here, number three is Nas. Now, me personally, I, especially after Nas just went on that crazy three four album run, Man's dropped four albums over the last two years. He won a Grammy off of one of them, his first Grammy ever. And all these albums were pretty damn good. Like, if I were to rank them, I would give them, like, an 8 out of 10. 
at least nine out of ten. I wouldn't give many make call them perfect, but they're all really, really great albums. And Nas is fifty years old, making some of the best hip hop music out right now. And so, Culture Impact that's a given. I mean, the dude made Illmatic. You know what I'm saying? He created one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. He's actually created multiple albums that are some of the greatest hip-hop albums of all time. It was written, being another one of them. And so, you know, that I think that me personally, if we're talking about accolades and all this stuff, I think that accolades and sales are the only thing that keeps Nas out of the number one slot for me personally. If we're, we're using the parameters that Vibe Magazine put together, I think that accolades... And uh, sales. So I, I know Nas hasn't sold that many records in the grand scheme of things, but I know he's he's he he just won his first Grammy a couple years ago. So this dude's been around since 1989, and he's just won his first Grammy. So obviously he's not going to win in the accolades category. So that's the only reason why I can't give Nas the number one slot. Because me personally, I think like in terms of storytelling ability, Billy the Rap, longevity, cultural impact, Nas is that dude. Nas is the man. But there's still two more people on this list. Let's take a look real quick. We have Kendrick Lamar at number two, which is... Mm, mm, mm. Now, so... I think this is, to me the most controversial and it's not because I don't agree with it. I just think that Kendrick Lamar's story is still working out. I still think that he still hasn't made the best music of his career yet. Like I still think that there's going to be a lot more music come from coming from him. And this is from the guy who dropped good kid, mad city to pimp a butterfly. Uh, his last album are all incredible, right? He just won the best rap album a couple of days ago, right? But like I said, I, I think that his trajectory is still going up in terms of his creative output. And I guess if you're making this list right now, go ahead and call him number two. But if you put him above Nas, it's like that's that's kind of a wild that's a wild statement to me to put him above Nas because I think that Nas, especially after that run, you know what I'm saying, if Nas didn't drop four albums in the last two years, then I'd be like, okay. But Nas just did that, and they're all incredible. So he's showing the longevity. He's showing the 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 proudness, the thirst, the hunger. The Kendrick Lamar just popped out after five years, right? And he came out with a therapy album, basically talking about you know his his inner demons. And don't get me wrong, the album is absolutely incredible. But it takes away from the grandiose mythos of what it means to have to be, to have that longevity and that reach. And like I said. I think Kendrick Lamar still has more great music in him. I still, still think that he is hasn't hit his peak yet. I still think, which is wild. Like right now, when I say that, it's like you 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 hear this man's music, and it's incredible. Um, but I still think he has not reached that that magnum opus, and he just now is branching out into new things. Right now, he's just now like out here working with the creators of South Park and doing a little bit of acting over here. He just started his own label over here and he's putting his cousin on and baby Keem over here. So like he's just now, just now starting to branch out into like the other areas that all these other rappers have been doing their entire career. So it's crazy to put a number two because that means that in theory, if they were to do this list 10 years from now, Kendrick Lamar would be number one, in my personal opinion, based off of the parameters and what they got going on. But he's not quite on Nas level. Like I said, Nas dropped four albums. That's crazy to me. Four incredible albums with Hit Boy in two years at 50. Nutty. Greatest rapper of all time to me. But Billboard decided that the greatest rapper of all time, and it should be obvious at this point, is Jigga Man. Jay Z. It's not even going to show me Jigga Man's picture. Dang. They're like, you don't, need this, you don't even know what Jay Z looks like. Just know that he's out here as the number one rapper. Damn, no picture of Jay-Z, huh? All right, well, you know what Jay-Z looks like. You've seen him. He's He just performed at the Grammys uh, a couple nights ago. And he did an incredible job. And I think that's part of it, too. Because, like, I, I have this... Oh, here we go. We got the picture up. Uh, for me, it's like, fuck. All right, so... I know I just put out a reel saying that a lot of Jay-Z's accolades and the reason why people consider him the best is because of his net net worth and to a degree that's still true 
they even say that in the article. You know what I'm saying right here, the last sentence is uh, cultural and financial standpoint of the last three decades. So his money did play a factor in him being number one on this list. They also talk about you know his brands do say Armand Brignac, how the fuck you say that? Like him bringing all these different rappers to billionaire status, like money, 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 money. But with that said. Jay-Z is one of the best rappers of all time. Like, lyrically speaking, he has the proudness, he has the energy, he has the lyrical tenacity, he has cool double entendres, he can rap fast, he can rap slow, he can rap, tell stories. He has one of the widest ranges in hip-hop. But, and I said this in the Quasar Code podcast, make sure you check out the episode, I'll put, post it in the link or something. I was talking about how Jay-Z is in the same category as like Tom Brady and LeBron James and Ryu from Street Fighter and, you know, like basic. And when I say basic, I don't even mean that in an offensive way. But what I mean is that like they, they've, they've gotten past the, the point where we start, start or that we keep rooting for them. Right. Like once you hit a certain level of success, it's no longer like, oh, we we want to see you win now. Especially if you hit that B, you get that B, you get that billionaire. There's no good billionaires, right? Isn't that the saying? All, all, all billionaires are bad. So what makes Jay-Z special, right? Because he rapped his way there? No. Everybody feels the same way where it's like, well, he he is he's a billionaire. He's not blah, blah, blah. So, you know, he can't, he whatever. At the same time, the same people or different people would argue that because he's worth a billion dollars, he's one of the best rappers of all time. And that's not a fair argument because... One of my favorite rappers, Black Thought, I think is like at 28 on here. And it's like, to me, Black Thought is a better rapper than Jay-Z. If we're talking about bar quality, even longevity, consistency, all that stuff, right? We haven't got a Jay-Z album in six years, five years, five or six years it's been since we had a Jay-Z album. And Jay-Z put out a, an eight minute long verse and we were calling him GOAT. Fair? Like I said, I'm not I'm not here to necessarily like argue that, but at the same time I am because that sweet sweet clout. But like I said, my man Nas has dropped four fucking albums. If Jay Z had put out any album in the last six years on the same quality of Nas's album, then I'd be like, all right. But he hasn't really done much. He pops out and we're like, oh yeah, Jay Z, you're so rich and you're so awesome. You have Beyonce as your wife. So congratulations to Jay Z. Like I said, it's not. I'm not mad at this list. I actually think this is a very, very good list. I think this list is actually probably one of the best uh, editorial lists that I've ever seen in terms of lists. What I'm saying it's actually sw- it's very solid, and they justify pretty much everybody on here in a way that is that makes sense. There are a couple on here that I'm like, mm, I would put you lower or higher, but for the most part, man, this this list this list is smacking. I really love Scarface at number 16. I think that I think that's uh, just great. It's beautiful. Ice Cube, like all these people are basically where they should be on this list. So congratulations to Billboard. Shout out to Vibe for putting together this list because I, I think you guys did a good job on that. I, I might have to watch the roundtable video to see how you guys like came to these decisions. But what do you guys think about the list? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. We can have some arguments. We can do some, some keyboard warrior shit and see... Uh, what we think about this list. If you guys like this video, please like it, subscribe it. We're going to come back with more reaction videos and more content for you guys to fucking get all in your britches about. And we'll be back with more content. Shout out to you for watching. Stay safe. Peace out.